table tennis phenomenon and Cambridge alumna, Dr. Ding Yaping, who has won 18 world championships, four Olympic golds between eight, uh, 1989 and 1997. She's a titan of not just her own sport, but many other sports, and famously beat Benedict Cumberbatch with a spoon, which is quite an achievement. Um, today, she retains a very strong presence in sports through professional investment. So without further ado, please give a round of applause for Deng. Dear President Henry Ford, distinguished guests, union members, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Deng Yaoping. I'm both honored and humbled to have been invited to speak to you this evening. I've never ever seen my first time visit in Cambridge nearly 20 years ago. Cambridge, such a beautiful campus, such nice, friendly people here. I proved one of my most significant and beautiful memories in my life. I should like to begin by introducing Xu Zhimo, one of the China's greatest poets. He was a visiting scholar to Cambridge University almost a century ago. He loved Cambridge so much, a return visit in 1928. When he left, he wrote a poem to express his feelings. It was called saying goodbye to Cambridge again, and it helped out put Cambridge on the map in China. Now, please allow me to try to read a few lines and to see what a Cambridge is like in the heart of Xi Zhimo. Very quietly, I take my leave, as quietly as I came here. Quietly, I wave goodbye to the rosy clouds in the western sky. This is a beautiful and romantic picture of Cambridge. But he forgot mention how challenging it was to study here, which I found out later myself, isn't it? <laughs> you agree? <laughs> yes, later, I made personal connection with Cambridge. First as a language student, and later I did my PhD degree here. You can see the photos. This is a Newnham Language Center, which is I studied my English there in 1998. That time, I just retired from my professional career. And I couldn't speak English. Even that, I took the money with me in my back, forwards, the backwards, you know, from the home to the school and to the bank. I even can't open an account to save my money. Thanks, you know, Cambridge is quite a safe place. 
I took the money, you know, almost two weeks. It's dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> so many local people, and also many of Chinese as well, recognized me and gave me a lot of help. So I got lots of uh, happy memories that time. See, fame does bring benefits sometimes. After I had studied a few months in Cambridge, little by little, my language skill improved and I was able to work around in July. You can see the photos. There are many happy faces and they're proud of selves. And I was still there watching them for hours during the graduation ceremony. I think you're quite familiar with the photo, isn't it? But I'm quite happy with them and uh, a little bit uh, jealous about them as well because I saw so many happy faces, even their relatives, parents, friends. They came over to attend their ceremony. It's more like when we won the medals, when we go to the uh, medal ceremony. I think we got a quite similar feeling, isn't it? But uh, very different. So that time I said to myself, one day, I start to dream, daydream. One day I can uh, study in Cambridge. And uh, I said to me, no, probably not, no way. I just uh, learning English here. If I couldn't save my money to the bank, how can I study in Cambridge? And then I quite sadly to saying to myself, mm, probably I have to wait for next life rather than this life. So they dream finished and because of their bell rang about the campus waking me up from my dream a little bit frustrated for me at that time well almost 20 years has passed I've come back here today as a proud and a happy Cambridge alumni with my own wonderful memories. I know many of us, including every one of you here, have all kinds of colorful dreams in our lives. Sometimes our dreams can come true. Sometimes they just stay forever as a dream. I'm very lucky that I fulfilled not only my Cambridge dream, but also many other dreams in my life. So my topic for today, let dreams fly. Now I will share with you through four different stories, the dreams of my life. The first story, from a little girl to an Olympic champion. When I was a little child, I dreamed to become world champion. One day, I started to play ping pong with my father. 
when I was five years old. You can see the pictures because I'm uh, too little, too short. I have to stand on the wooden box and I can reach to the table. Otherwise, that time, I'm only my head of the table there, like this. I can reach to the table to play. I gradually, I started to win when I was eight. So I, I can beat the most of uh, the same age of um, players. I should join the, national, the uh, provincial team, but I was rejected by the coaches. Do you know why? <laughs> exactly. Because I'm too short. And um, I used to be trained with the team. At the beginning, they asked me to join the team to train. But one day, the coaches asked my father to take me home. And the reasons only said, because I'm too short. I won't be good in the future. So you have to take her home. And why go home? My father told me, would you agree? If you agree, we stop now. If you disagree, you have to become the fighters to show the coaches, your opponents, you are really the best one. So I said to my father, even that time I don't know what the decision for, that time only 10 years old. But I said to my father, I can beat them. But why? They'll stay in the team while I'm out. Simply like that. So I said, I want to continue. And also because I'm so passionate of table tennis. But from that time, I've become very shy, quiet. So I trained extremely hard. You know, in 1980s, still very poor country in China. We trained even in the public bathroom. In the winter time, minus 10 degree. You know, in the summertime, we trained in uh, over 40 degree without any conditioner and um, heating. But I never quit because I want to win, because I want to stick on my dreams to become world champion. Only three years later, I won the national champion. And during the games, I beat many national team players and even a lot of uh, world champion. During that uh, training period for four years, I usually trained about 13 hours per day, seven days a week, about 90 hours. And we special used the training method we call multiple training. Before I start, I met two our students said they played the ping pong before. And I'm uh, quite happy. Um, you know, you play the um, multiple um, training, which is the hardest training.
training method in ping pong. What is more, I need to wear the sun vest and to tight some backs tightly to my legs. Do you know how heavy in total? About 15 kilograms. I played the thousands, the thousands of balls, and when the training finished, when I took off the sun vest and the sun back from my leg, you know what kind of feeling come out. Yes, exactly, I can fly. <laughs> I really can move in fast. So, the amazing feelings after that, but that is extremely hard training method. I won the national champion when I was 13 years old, and I should join the national team. But four out of five coaches in the national team, they disagree. They think I won't have any chance to beat, you know, strong, tall European girls. How can I beat them? Such a little girl. So I was rejected. All coaches been uh, three times to talk about my case. I think I'm always make trouble for them. But in the end, the head of coach, Mr. Zhang Xielin, gave example for others, said, you think Deng Yaoping shortness is a disadvantage, but I have a different way to thinking. Because she is too short, and uh, she can see the ball always higher. <laughs> so what happening? And I uh, attack all the time without any defense. Many chances, all the chances for me. <laughs> so I really turn around the people think I did a disadvantage for me, but I turn around to this is really a disadvantage. As it really is my personal, um, sp specific playing style. And finally, I joined the national team. Less than a half a year, I rewarded him with my first women's world title. You can see the photo. In the middle, this is Mr. Zhang Xielin. He is the head of coach from national team. This is uh, my partner, Chao Hong. This is photo, it's the uh, first world champion when we won. And also, I'm the youngest world champion in ping pong history, which is only 16 years old at that time. Since then, I dominated world women's <laughs> ping pong. <laughs> and uh, I continuously to win. And I kept the number one ranking for eight years. Before I take a retirement, even the ITTF officials talk to me, why you stop that? If you continue to play, you can kept another 10 years for the number one. So finally, I decided, you know, 
to take the retirement. But before that, many people, probably you are interested in that, why I'm so good, what kind of tips you can give them. Because I'm alumni of Cambridge, <laughs> and today I will tell you, but probably you can't learn it. <laughs> can you play it? Who can play ping pong with your hand? Oh, uh, okay, good. Um, actually, I got uh, two tips, <laughs> if you can learn. <laughs> First, it's my special attacking skill. And secondly, it's my competitive spirit. You know, I just mentioned, because I'm short, I see the ball always higher. Tacking, tacking, and the tucking. We have a say in ping pong. The tack is the best defense. Through many years hard training, and I won already a few world champion, but I still the hardest to train in my team. I always the latest one when I finish the, the training. When I go to the canteen, when the chef saw me, they are very happy because they can end it, the work. But I'm a really should thank them. I'm a well looked after by them. Even I always let them date home. You know, for professional athletes, the biggest enemy is the injuries. I'm the same as among so many professional athletes. I've got the injuries from my neck, back, and ankle. And sometimes, between the matches, which is I found the most difficult moment, I had to step so hard so I wouldn't feel the pain from my ankle. So the, in the quite nearly ended my career, the doctors, the therapists, come to talk to me. They would suggest me to finish or to start the career. They said, if I would continue Probably, I will sit on the wheelchair for my rest of life. Through my many years career, I won 18 world titles, including four Olympic gold medals. My dreams of a little girl to an Olympic champion has come true. It's not just talent, but my hard work and persistence that made everything happen. So, I'd like to move on my second story from ABC to Cambridge's PhD. Before I take retirement, I started to think is that I become the coach, this is quite normal, or I need to do something else. So I said to me, probably I have to do something else, more challenging, more interesting. But how can I 
compete with you, talented young people. What is the result come out? And I have to improve my education. So I decided to go to Tsinghua University. Tsinghua, you know, is one of the best universities in China, like at Cambridge in the UK and MIT in the US. Probably you are someone come from Tsinghua here. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes. The, um, the pictures shows the first time I registered in Tsinghua, that's a photo. And the second one, which I took the first lesson from English courses. The professor, Cheng Musheng, talked to me and asked me, what's your English level? And uh, I said, really the beginner. And she said, can you read? I said, no. Can you write? I said, no. Professor Chen said, OK, read the 26 letters first. And what I remembered, I tried so hard, put in a capital and a small letter together. Even I can't complete in 26 letters. That time is in November 1997. I felt I'm a worst student in Tsinghua. Luckily, through many years hard training, my competitive spirit come out. I have to show I'm not that bad. So I'm studying very hard. I don't know what is happening for my hair. Why hardly to remember the vocabularies, you know, like crazy pronunciation. But uh, I don't know what happening for my hair. Why slept? And over the night, I can see so many hairs on the pillows. I'm a little bit worried about if I continue doing like this, I will get bored. <laughs> but thankfully, they stopped the someday, <laughs> and I still get my hair. But um, really, I got my uh, bachelor degree from Tsinghua. And I continue to spend the next two years in the UK to study for my master's at the University of Nottingham. And the wife finished that in 2002. I started to think about, hmm, maybe my pictures, I just mentioned the memories, the beautiful memories, a little bit jealous that time, a lot of students at graduation ceremony. I thought, I don't need to wait. Nice life. I'd like to try to apply Cambridge. And then finally, I got it. You can see <laughs> there's a student card. Are you the same with me? Not the same? Not the same. <laughs> okay. Right. This is uh, the student card. I got it. I registered in January 2003. And um, I spent a lot of time in the uh, university library, south front, floor six. <laughs> if I eat in the canteen in library, I want to save the time. 
for my dissertation, for my topic. Olympic branding and global competition. The case of Beijing 2008 Olympic Games. Four case studies of global brands. Over 40 executives with more than 100 hours of recording transcript into 600,000 words, which I did the interview. So many um, CEOs. And uh, you know, um, it's extremely hard work I have done. I found most of the articles, I think I read hundreds and hundreds of uh, articles and literatures have done the massive work. When the Cambridge PhD I found it is so tough. Even before, you know, um, I I'm go to the University of Cambridge here. Many friends and uh, even my parents and the teachers from Tsinghua, they said to me, probably you not go there because you are famous. If you can't graduate from Cambridge, that will be very embarrassing. Like China, you know, we have a thing, you lose face. <laughs> <laughs> so, finally, Viva coming, and I asked my um, supervisor, is any chance to visit it, the Viva? What kind of situations? And uh, my supervisor said, no way, this is top secret. <laughs> you have to find out for yourself. I asked him, how long normally will it take? And um, he answered that. You are good enough, maybe 30 minutes. If not, maybe take uh, all day along. But uh, how about the average, I said. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, probably three hours. And um, he said to me, you will enjoy the Viva. I said, no way. <laughs> so, that day, the Viva start. I entered the room. There are two examiners already sit there. They're quite friendly, but I can feel the pressure from the air. I'm so nervous. I feel this is like Olympic finals. So I took my bag and I didn't take out my dissertation. But I saw the two examiners one examiner had a long list of questions on his paper. Another one marked all four, almost four, in my dissertation. I saw, wow, today is a really tough game. <laughs> so one began that the examiner said to me very seriously, you only can answer what we asked. Very serious. And so, but during the Viva, and two, one very specific number, they've been asking for. From that moment, I 
took out my dissertation from my bag and find out where the numbers come from to answer the question. And they had a um, little bit uh, chatting. And uh, finally, they smiling, talked to me. Congratulations, you're passed. From that time, I'm so happy. I'm really so relieved. Five years, finally, I got it. And I took almost three hours along. And uh, when I go out, I call my supervisor. I said to him, I'm passed. Why? Just finished, he said, great. I can feel he also very anxious. So finally, the graduation ceremony, you can see the photos on 30th of November, 2008, along with my uh, husband and my son. Thanks for my family members all the support. I've been studying here for five years. And not only, I think, the five years, in total, for my whole education, since November 1997 to November 2008. 11 years from ABC to a Cambridge PhD. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The third story, a long road to Olympics. The so-called 100 years Olympic dream started from the three questions to the Olympics. Actually, one young man from China wrote an article to publish on the newspaper. He'd be asked three questions about Olympics. The first one, when can we participate in the Olympic Games? Two, when can China win Olympic gold medals? Three, when can China host the Olympic Games? To answer the first question, Mr. Liu Changchun participated in athletics in the Summer Olympic Games in 1932 and answered the second question that Mr. Xu Haifeng won the gold medals in shooting in 1984. To answer the third question, China made the first effort and we lost two votes to Sydney. We come back in 2001. I'm honored. I represent Chinese athletes. I did both final presentation. So since three questions, uh, which was published the newspaper in 1908, which is just London host the Olympics. So actually during the bidding periods, 
I was a wealthy ambassador of Olympic bidding. And I personally want to share with you my, my story. One day, I went to shopping in the supermarket. A lady like this, middle-aged lady, recognized me and came over to talk to me. And she said, Deng Yaping, you have to work harder. Let the Beijing hold the Olympic Games because you are working for the IOC and you know the IOC members and they got the votes. I don't know why <laughs> a middle age the staff working in the supermarket asked me working harder. And I said to her, why? And she told me that if Beijing hosts the Olympic Games, my neighborhood will reconstruct it and we can move a, a better apartment. <laughs> I don't know how to answer her. <laughs> but why work to persuade the each IOC member? I always tell them the story. I understand that the Olympics, we've been waiting for 100 years as a nation, as a country. My people really are cherishing. But for the Olympics, also for the Olympic movement, also need to go to China because we have 1.3 billion people and we have 400 million young people. So definitely win-win situation. So one Mr. Samranch, the president of the IUC, announced the winner is Beijing. The whole delegation Members jumped up and shouted out with joy. And all Chinese people, particularly in Beijing, ran out into the street and gathered together to celebrate the success. You can see the photo. It's just amazing. There were many people go onto the street, even sit down in the car because it's all crowded, they can't drive anymore. And the bar, you know, they're all free for everybody. <laughs> and you can drink all without a pay, something like that, you know, amazing. <laughs> and this is some um, hundred years Chinese dreams for Olympics. Through seven years hard preparation, and finally, in the end of uh, closing ceremony, President Jack York commentated, the 2008 Olympic Games became a truly exceptional Games. I was working for organizing committee. At the beginning, I was working in the marketing department. We raised the fund, find more partnerships, sponsorships for the Olympics. And also later, I worked for the uh, Olympic Village as a 
spoke to a woman from the village to give old news and for the media. So 2008, really a special year, you know. We reached medal table ranking number one. We won about 100 medals. We become the number one. And not only for the, uh, the medal tables, but also the Olympics left great legacy for China, as well as in Beijing. You can see the photos. Before 2001 and after 2008, you can see a lot changes that Olympics bring many benefits for our ordinary Chinese people. The quality of lives and many quality of constructions, roads, airports, really, we benefited from the Olympics. Also, the Olympics provided 1.3 million jobs and added 105 billion yuan, about 12 billions in pounds in terms of Beijing's GDP. In the post era, which is I wanted to, to talk my next dream, is my dream is the sports for all. In the post Olympic era, the sports industry starts to boom. I'd like to introduce also, I wanted to make new contributions to this using my PhD knowledge and um, many years Olympic experiences and also many Chinese people started to play more and more sports and spent more money on sports. There are main two reasons. First one, because the Olympics, they were encouraging so many young people to participate in sports. And the second, Chinese people getting worse here, and uh, they wanted to have a better life and a quality life. So obviously, they will need sport to do more activities. And uh, from international experiences, when the average income of a citizens passes 5,000 US dollars, they increase their consumption in sports and entertainment. Last year, I found it. Actually, the Deng Yaoping Sports Industry Investment Fund, in total, about five billion um, to raise the sports awareness for more people. Here, I will take a few examples. My friend, Mrs. Chen, she believes the health and the character building are important for her kids. She sent her kids to football club and the training fee is about 1,000 pounds a year, only once a week after school. 
and in total market value of a sports training from five years old to 18 years old is over 10 billion pounds. So, you know, um, recently, so many Chinese found and um, big companies, they bought many European football clubs. And also, there are many football stars go to China to open academy or school or training programs. So the football always Chinese love and hate. <laughs> it's a difficult feeling sometimes. But still a lot of parents want to send their children to play or to enjoy the beauty of football. Mr. Pi Jiyuan, he is my colleague. He loves playing basketball and enjoy the collecting basketball shoes. You know, we have uh, so many boys, I think in particular, they are the defense of the NBA. And uh, they have kind of a hobby to collect the basketball shoes. And uh, some of the uh, famous brands cost more than 1,000 RMB, about uh, more than 100 pounds. But for my colleague, he, he just buy it. He, he has over hundreds of pair of shoes. And, you know, um, they're just a hobby. And then they, they talk the, um, the shoes online. It's just fascinating about it. The, the market value of a sports equipment in China reached 240 billion in 2014 and uh, continuously grew to 280 billion in 2015. Huge market. And the last one, Mr. Mao Zhaqing is a very good friend of mine. He started to run marathon five years ago. And uh, he ran and uh, finished famous six marathons in the world. And uh, he, this uh, photos actually is um, he ran the Linden Marathon in uh, April 2015. In marathon, now, it's a kind of uh, fashion in China. In 2016, there are 328 officially registered marathon events in China. And the developing sport industry is a sign of economic growth. However, there are still a lot of people who suffer from poverty, disease, or disability, whose dreams should not be ignored. Actually, I came from a very ordinary Chinese family. My father, just a ping pong coach. My mother, she worked for the textile factory. I've been uh, helped by so many people and finally I can reach and achieve my dreams. Once I have this kind of capability, I also wanted to help those people who are needs. So, firstly, I donated some of the money from my prize money in 
Atlanta and uh, built a Deng Yaoping Hope Project Primary School in Shanxi province. And in 2004, we started gathering most of the Chinese um, champions. I think uh, now we have over 50 world champions, Olympic champions as well. We set up the NGOs called 10 China Laureates Championships Fund to help poor children. And over 13 years, we've helped over tens of thousands of children, assisted more than 30 schools and the charity organizations. And you can see the photo, this boy, which is uh, I took them to play ping pong. Actually, this boy is a kind of a mental problem with it. And also, another boy, when the Wenchuan earthquake happened. You know, Wenchuan earthquake hit it very heavily and um, in, in 2008, just before the games. The boy lost his parents and lost one leg. When the disaster happened for him, he just you know, can't say anything, you know, he, he's so upset. And uh, the doctor talked to him and the knows he is the table tennis fan. And the doctor said to him, if the world champion can play with you, will you be uh, happier? And uh, the boy said, no way. They won't be here, you like. And when the doctor finds me, we like to, to, to go there and to talk with him and to play a few shots to him. I said, of course, I can go. And when I went there and to talked to him during the whole process, playing, talking, and he have no say anything, no words. But I can feel when I hold him, you know, and give him a hug. I can feel his body was shaking all the time. And I can feel the excitement and really I think shocked for him. He never thought this has really happened. But a while left, the doctor said the boys had a big crying and talked to me. He will get him better because finally he relieved his emotion. And also it relieves his emotional feelings. So I think the boys, the miracle maybe, the dreams, and my appearance, I wanted to let the boys to light a new life. Maybe something happened for him. To conclude my speech before I um, have another uh, example actually is Zhao Shuai. You can see he is a disabled ping pong player. He, when he was four years old, he had car accident. And uh, when he had a car accident, his father, him to play ping pong 
and、um, his father not the coach, but、uh, is the fans of、uh, ping pong. And when he started to play, he showed he has a talent with ping pong. Not long ago, only five years, he started to win the champions, and you know he lost the, the left arm. The right side, probably you can see very clearly. The right hand, the fingers lost almost the functions. So he only can tie the fingers with the racket, the、um, rackets, and can play. Otherwise, he can't hold it. So that that he won, London. Part Olympic Games, men singles, and the continuously winning the Rio Part Olympic Games last year, and、uh, I'm touched by him story. Why personally saw him? He's really a positive young guy. I was the university together to set up Deng Xiaoping Sports Scholarship. So we offered him to go to university to have a further education. So like to help the disabled athletes among a lot of talented young people to have a chance to study abroad. So to conclude my speech, I'd like to share my personal thoughts. No matter how far away my dream is, no matter how hard I strive to achieve my dream, I will always give my whole heart to fulfill my dream. If I can make my dreams come true, I believe you can too. So、um, to finish. Um, today, I'm so honored, and I know this time it's a difficult time for you because of examinations. <laughs> <laughs> so I should thank you again. Come here to listen my speech. So、uh, finally, I will show the short the video. With a very famous actor, so please sit back and relax. <laughs> Thank you.